how to reclaim your lost years. How to reclaim your lost years. And the truth is that many of us have lost a lot of years. <laughs> and that is why this particular message is so important these days. That we would know what to do about our lost years. About our lost years. Okay, are you ready to go? If you have shared the message, then we'll be ready to take off from there. Now, something about time is that, uh, you know, time is something that you cannot really, you know, people could ask you, how much do you make in a, in a, in a day? So you could say you make $1,000 in a day. Or you could even make $10,000 in a day. You could even make a million dollars in a day. There are people who are making a million dollars in a day. But with the, there is no amount of money, no amount of money, $10,000, $100,000, one million dollars, $100 million that will be able to buy back time. You cannot buy time back especially when it's lost. But you could do your best to regain and to reclaim, but you cannot buy it back. So there are, there, but there are ways and there are wisdom that could be applied to reclaim back and to regain some of the lost years of uh, of our lives you know like we have said also wealth i mean the greatest wealth in the world is time is the wealth of time and time has to be used judiciously so since wealth i mean money cannot buy time so how do we reclaim it back how do we re reclaim it how do we regain it if money cannot buy it back and we also know it's not just impossible to buy time. It is also impossible to save time. So, I mean, that's to keep time. So, we cannot say, I will keep time and preserve it and save it. <laughs> we cannot do that. You cannot keep time. You cannot save it. You cannot buy it and keep it in the store. <laughs> it's impossible. <laughs> So since we cannot buy time, we cannot save it, we cannot keep it. So how do we reclaim it back? How do we regain it back? Well, another thing with time is that it's impossible to delay it or to stop it or to pause it. So you must really be skillful with time. If you are not skillful with time, if you don't know how to use time and manage time and to, uh, to rule over time, a loss will be lost in life. So now that a loss in the lives of a lot of people has it's already been lost, is there still any chance to do anything about the time? Yes, we can. <laughs> <laughs> what you can do with time is this. Listen closely. This is very important now. The time that you have left. Let's say, you know, every day we have eight seconds passing by, minutes passing by, and hours passing by. Every day time is passing, time is passing. The most important thing to do, the best way to deal with that is to make sure that every fragment of time that is passing, every second of time that is passing, that is well packed, that we fill it up with maximum value and maximum results so you cannot buy time you cannot store time you cannot stop time you cannot pause time you cannot 
you know, uh, you you cannot, you, you know, uh, stop, rep, replace time, but what you can do to rest, to try to ca uh, cash up or do with what you had lost is to be what, number one. You have to be so well organized and organized in what in your activities. You have to be so well organized in your in your in your in your for, for uh, result orientation. You have to be so well organized in making sure that you learn how to pack and how to package or how to feel every second and every minute with substance and with value. So you have to be, so the secret is, number one, you have to be organized. Organized towards what? You have to be organized towards Organize towards adding value. Organize towards maximizing time. Organize towards doing something, making sure that you, orga you, you organize yourself towards bringing out the maximum result from every minute of your day, from every second. Make sure that every second of your day is not being wasted. Number two thing, the way to do that, number two thing to do to max to reclaim your time back and to regain your time and reclaim the lost years, your lost time, is you've got to be not just organized, but you've got to be purposeful, goal-oriented. You have to be pragmatic, purposeful, and goal-oriented. So your whole life has to be rearranged in such a way that you are no more, your activities have to be arranged in such a way that every activity that you do is targeted at bringing maximum result, maximum value, maximum productivity every, every second. So everything you are doing is targeting some results. You have to be goal oriented. You have to be pragmatic. In everything you do, especially in the use in, in, in the use of your time, you have to organize all your activities, all your life activities to bring about maximum result. Maximum result. Maximum result. Next thing you need to do for you to really be effective and to be able to bring back your time is You've got to learn to live in consciousness. You've got to learn to live in active consciousness. You have to learn to live in active consciousness. Living in active consciousness is being in the here and now. If you are not in the here and now, you will always be lost. And you, will, you are losing time and you will not even know when life is passing by. Now, a lot of people, they are living every day. They practice what we call they dreaming. They dreaming. So they might be here now listening to me. And while they are listening to me, they are thinking about their children, what they are doing in school, in college, in, in, in nursery school, in kindergarten, what is happening right now to my kid. Or they are here in Europe and they are thinking of what is their village in Africa or their mother or their father. So people, they dream. So if you want to really be productive, you've got to get rid of the habit of daydreaming. You've got to get rid of the habit of daydreaming. So that is absent-mindedness. You've got to stop being absent-minded. You've got to stop being, uh, being, you know, being, be traveling in your in your mind, in your into your own world. You've got to learn to live in the now. You've got to learn to live here and now, here and now. And here and now means you are always conscious of every second. You are always conscious of every minute, and you are conscious and always asking yourself, "What am I doing now?" That is what what is what I'm doing now. Really, you know, facilitating my goal and my life 
my life my life uh, purpose what I, what am i doing now is what i'm doing now really working for my good for my calling is what i'm doing now really working towards my goal or not you must make sure that you're always every second managing your time and your consciousness you are always asking what i'm doing now is it working towards my goal so in what way is what i'm doing now uh, facilitating my goal my my result my life calling and my 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 purpose so that ability to ask yourself question to query yourself to challenge yourself every two seconds actually is the ability to be in the consciousness and to live in the consciousness now here and now uh, sometimes you know you know, i'm sure you have seen this happen many times you are you are talking with somebody and in the next second, you just discover that the person is gone. And you're asking him, oh, are you here? He goes, oh, oh, I forgot. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I lost it. Or I, I'm thinking of something. So you've got to get rid of that kind of habit. But there are some people that don't have that habit of being absent-minded. They don't have habit of uh, <laughs> sleepwalking or daydreaming. But even though you are not daydreaming, but you are still absent-minded in the sense that you are doing something, you are here, but you, your heart is not in what you are doing. Your heart is not in what you are doing. So that's the next point. For you to really regain back your, your lost years, you must make sure uh, you always put your heart in everything you do. That's like what God told us that, you know, everything that your hand finds to do, do it with all your heart. You know, the commitment, the, the, the totality of your commitment could also increase your efficiency and make you to be much more productive. So, you, could, you know, when you learn to do everything 100%, when you learn to put your heart in everything you do, you put absolute commitment in what you do, when you are always there 100%. So 100% commitment, 100% dedication will always, uh, uh, always increase your efficiency as well, 100% uh, uh, dedication. But let me now tell you one of the most powerful things that you could do to reclaim your lost years, to regain and reclaim your lost years. That word is intensity. Intensity. You want to remember that word. The ability to be intense in everything is a key factor in reclaiming your lost years. The ability to be intense in everything you do. The ability to be not just purposeful but intense. So you know it's like the it's the most it's, it's like the Asians or uh, Chinese. If you know anything about the Chinese and and. Uh, the Asians, Chinese, Koreans, and, and uh, Japanese. You know, they might not be powerful. They might not be very strong. But those people, they are very intense. That is their strength. The national uh, you know, value, the national, uh, national kind of uh, you know, yeah, character that is present for and with all uh, Asian people is that intensity and they have used it well they have used intensity well and just you know that value alone that quality alone to be so intense in whatever they do is what is making the a Asian nations a leading I mean leading lead, leading nations in the world if you if you look at uh, you know the the Asian tiger countries those Asian tiger countries you see that they don't have too much raw materials. They don't have too much natural resources. But in whatever they do, they are intense. They have one value and they maximize that one value. They have one quality and they maximize it. And that quality is intensity. Intensity. Anything they do, they do with utmost intensity. And that increases their productivity. That increases their the value of whatever they produce that increases their net worth and that made them to come up you know in in whatever they begin to do if if you look in america there is a statistic that says the asians are some of the most uh, 
educated and the most excellent students, and not just as students, but professionals in America, not just in America, even in Europe, in England. And the key behind their success is their intensity. So, <laughs> yeah, the people who are asking me the question, Pastor Sunday, how come you are able to do this program twice a day, uh, morning and night, every day, and you have been doing this now for so many months, for four months? How come you are able to do that? Well, I'll tell you why. The reason is because I'm learning intensity. <laughs> Not that I'm learning it. Actually, I have it. I have the intensity. Uh, I have the intensity in me. You know, um, I didn't know. Maybe I, I, I used to have it before. Maybe I developed it, but I thank God for it. I have discovered that intensity in me, and uh, and I've been able to develop it. So, so so and you know what, what one thing that is connected with intensity also is is persistence when you are intense you do things in speed and you do things persistently another good thing about intensity is you uh, it's a little bit different from tenacity intensity is a little bit dif different from tenacity what well, asians are intense they are people who have the value i mean the quality of intensity but we Nigerians, we have tenacity. It's different. Tenacity is to be able to do something for long and to keep on doing it. But intensity is not just to be able to do it for long and to be able to do it, uh, uh, you know, constantly. But intensity is also to be able to do it in speed and to be able to do it with rapid, rapidness. So if there is... You know, in, in tenacity, tenacity does not always include in, in itself rapidity or rapidness. But, but, but uh, intensity is, is, includes in it not just die hard quality, but it also includes in it uh, intense uh, speed. It includes in it, um, uh, you know, the, 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 the consistency of speed. And and uh, did, you know so so it's a little bit much more different from tenacity. It's a little bit much more different from tenacity. So we are talking about intensity here. Intense. Many people are not being intense. We cannot. People that are intense, they put pressure upon themselves, and they are able to maintain that pressure because tenacity. You could keep on going outside, keep on going, but intensity comes from inside. You could put pressure on yourself from the inside. For example, uh, let me give you a, a let me uh, let me um, tell you the difference between Ch Chinese people and Nigerian people. Nigerian people are, are tenacious, but not necessarily. In, you know, in, you know, not necessarily having intensity, not necessarily intense. Now, Nigerians could be tenacious in, you know, pursuing a goal. They keep on doing what they are doing, but at the same time, they like pleasure. At the same time, so Nigerians have they are tenacious, but they also have pleasure. They could also, even though they are, they are, they, are, they keep on pursuing their goal, but. They could be distracted by pleasure. They could be dis distracted by, mm -hmm, you know, by secondary stuff in the middle of it. But they will still keep on going. But an intense person is so intense, he doesn't see any other thing at all. He doesn't, if he's not even seeing pleasure, he's not seeing the need for any, he's not distracted by anything. He's so intense in whatever he's doing, he, he's only result oriented 100%. So, so we need both. We need both uh, tenacity, and we need both intensity. And but but when you have when you are tenacious as a as a nation, like you know, my people are very tenacious. Nigerians is a good thing. But when you have intensity, you know, you could I, I hope to have more result in a quicker in a shorter period of time. 
But because we are talking about time, we are talking about time, and uh, we are talking about time, and time is, we, I'm talking about how you could regain your lost years, and how you could uh, reclaim the lost years. So, so that is more related to the quality of intensity. So it's more talking about intense. The intensity is what helps you to reclaim your time back. You could be tenacious and have a lot of patience being tenacious. But, when, but the intensity helps you to reclaim the time back. When you are tenacious, you might be tenacious for a long time. Just be, but you still have a lot of time to be tenacious. But, but, but to intensity is what helps you to reclaim back the time. Now, uh, <laughs> some people are, are asking me, you know, uh, to, you know, how do we, how do we, if, if you are going to be giving us so much, how do we succeed in, in you know, in working on them? Well, that's your own problem now. But I have to do my own thing. I have to maximize time. And I need that intensity. So, this is one word that you want to remember when it comes to reclaiming time. You want to be intense. You want to be intense. To, claim, to reclaim time, you need intensity. And if you want to learn to do that, Look forward to, I mean, learn from the Asians, learn from Chinese, learn from uh, Singaporeans, learn from uh, Koreans, and study them a little bit. If you study them, you will know that they are very intense people. And he, even the kind of sports they do is, is a kind of sport that, needs, that has to do with inten intense, in intensity. And, and they are making it, and they've made it work for them economically. And they make it work for them intellectually. So we, if we really want to, when it comes to time, if we want to reclaim time, we could do that. And that's why, you know, Singapore, Singapore uh, was able to, I mean, be, grow from a third world country to becoming a first world country. So how could you go from a third world country to becoming a first world country? And today, the uh, standard of living in Singapore is much higher than in America. Standard of living is, is one of the highest in the world. And if it comes to education, you know, it's one of the most competitive countries in the world when it comes to ed education. Uh, it's always number one or number two in the world in education. So, um, you know, intensity makes you to shorten the time. For example, you know, Singapore is uh, got gained independence at the same time as all the African countries. But because of the intensity to do, to have maximum results in the shorter period of time, they were able to run so quick and make sure, and make sure that they gain, they came from second, I mean, first class, I mean, third class, uh, third, third world country into first world country. And it's not only uh, Singapore that was able to do that, Korea as well. You know, 50 years ago, 60 years ago, you know, Korea also was a very, you know, backward country. But they also were able to use that intensity to become the first world country. And so, so, so intensity is having to do with time, with reclaiming, with regaining, with regaining time. Let me give you another key. If you want to regain your lost years, if you want to regain your lost years, another key you need is... Another word that is very important. Okay, someone is giving us the definition of uh, intense here. Felix is doing that. Intense is extreme force, degree of force and strength. The extreme apl application of force, the, uh, the of strength, and 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 feelings and uh, uh, and emotions. So anyway, the next word. <laughs> The next word that, could, that will help you to regain back your lost years, if you really want to reclaim back your lo lost years, you need to master a word. And that other word, apart from intensity, is speed. 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 You need to learn to do everything in speed. Now, what is speed? Speed is the ability... That's my own definition, not the canonical definition. Speed is the ability to be able to take a decision in five seconds. So if I tell you, 
Let's say this is your hand. I tell you, take, 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 take. You are too late. Take, you are too late. You are too late. Okay, you got it this time. But take, you are too late. You're too late. Too late. Too late. Too late. Too late. Too late. <laughs> take it. Take it. Faster. 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 Fast. You got it. Five seconds. You've got to be able to take a decision in five seconds. Either you are going to, if you are hanging, oh, it's too, you are too late. You, the ability to take a decision in five seconds, within five seconds. The ability to, either you are going to do it or you are not going to do it. The ability, so if you really want to regain lost years, when it comes to speed, you must abandon your religious some of your religious belief, I mean, uh, some of your religious um, paradigm and stereotype, dogma, especially charisma. If you are a charismatic believer or Pentecostal believer, one of our religious paradigm and uh, dogma says you always have to find out the will of God. <laughs> So any little thing that you want to do, oh, let's find out the will of God. Let's find out the will of God. If you really want to be productive and you want to be efficient and you want to really reclaim back your lost years, there is no time. You just must bear that in mind. No time to be going to wait on God. You know, you know that's, that's a tradition. That has become a tradition in our charismatic world. Oh, we have to, I, okay, I will pray about it. <laughs> well, that is one of the you know, that is one of the dogmas that kill time more than any other thing. Why should you pray about it when God is in you? Why should you pray about it when he's in you right there? You could consult with him. There is not nobody that knows the spirit of a man that the spirit of God that is in him. Or there is nothing that knows the spirit of man that is the spirit of the spirit of the man that is in him. And we are in, in, this, in unison with the spirit of God. And you, the spirit of God and our spirit is intertwined. So learn to walk with God and hear him immediately. Learn just to master his voice. You don't need to, every little thing to be saying, oh, we're going to pray about it. Okay, we're praying, going to pray about it. Oh, I'm waiting for confirmation. One of the greatest evil in Christianity and one of the reasons why Christians don't produce results, one of the reasons why unbelievers have better results than Christians is because unbelievers don't need to wait on the Lord. They don't need to pray about it. They don't need to wait for confirmation. So if, and, and it's killing us and it's making us un, unproductive and it's making us to be ineffective and inefficient. So if you really want to, have to really reclaim and regain your lost years, Forget about those religious dogmas and and uh, postulates. Forget about those religious, you know, you know, you know, you know, pa paradigm and 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 uh, uh, postulates of of you know waiting on God and uh, and uh, you know and uh, you know. Okay, we have to pray about it, and and uh, we are waiting for confirmation. There is no need to wait for any confirmation. You are wait if you are already in the spirit. If you're already in the spirit, the word of God is already there for you. Why wait? He told us only to wait one time, to wait for the Holy Spirit to come. And the Holy Spirit has been here since then. Once the Holy Spirit is here, you don't have the right to wait anymore. The spirit of God is already here. Be friendly with the spirit of God. Learn to hear from the spirit. Learn to walk with the spirit. Learn to be led by the spirit. The Bible did not say that you should go and wait for confirmation. He said they that are led by the spirit, as many as are led by the spirit, they are the sons of God. Learn to be led by the spirit. I mean, being led by the spirit means you are you are in the move. You are in the move. You are on the move all the time. You are in. You know. You remember there is a there is a passage in 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 in. in uh, I think I've got to read this one this time. You know, I try not to go uh, reading the Bible all the time because I want to give you so much, and I don't want to you know uh, you know be distracted and waste a lot of time. So I try not to read too much uh, Bible, but this time I think I'm going to do it because, you know, I, I really want to prove to you, you know, if you have your Bible, if you don't have it, just listen to what I'm going to read. I'm going to read from Acts chapter 14, 
Acts chapter 14. Okay. Is it chapter 14? Let me see. I'm sorry. That's Acts chapter 16. Acts chapter 16. Let me show you something here from Acts chapter 16. The Acts chapter 16 says from verse 6, from verse, uh, yeah, from verse 6 to 10, from verse 6 to 10. Acts 16, from verse 6 to 10. Now, let's read this. Um, please listen to this. Now, when they had gone through Phrygia and the region of Galatia, Galatia they were forbidden by the Holy Spirit to preach the word in Asia. After they had come to Mysia, they tried to go into Bithynia, uh, but the Spirit did not permit them. So passing by Mysia, they came down to Troas, and a vision appeared to Paul in the night. A man of Macedonia stood and pleaded with him, saying, Come over to Macedonia and help us. Now, after he had seen the vision, immediately we sought to go to Macedonia, concluding that the Lord had called us to preach the gospel to them. Now, what is this scripture talking about? You remember Jesus told the disciples to go, go ye therefore into all the world and make disciples. Go ye therefore. The disciples were so focused and they were so intense and they were doing the work. They were obeying God and the instruction of Jesus speedily. They were obeying so speedily that they didn't have time to go and wait anymore. They were not after the Holy Spirit came in, in, in to them in Jerusalem and they were baptized in the Holy Spirit. They were no more waiting. They were no more waiting for the will of God. They were no more waiting that, okay, where should, you know, if it had been us today, we would have been praying and waiting. Okay, where should we go to? Where should we go to? Tell us, Holy Spirit. We are waiting for your revelation. Tell us, Holy Spirit. We are waiting for you, oh, Holy Spirit. We are waiting for confirmation. Even when Holy Spirit has spoken and you know in your head, a lot of things that we are waiting on God for, we don't need to wait on God for. A lot of things that we are asking for confirmation for, we don't need to ask for confirmation for. You already have your own mind and you have the mind of Christ and you already you know, know what to do. Do your research. Anyway, it's, it's, but so when they look what happened here, they were going, they first of all went to Phrygia. When they went to Phrygia in the region of Galatia, they were forbidden by the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit told them, no, this is not the place I want you to go. Don't preach here, because this region is not ready for the gospel yet. You know what they did? If it had been Christians today, we would have said, okay, since the Holy Spirit has stopped us from going further, I mean, from coming to Phrygia, we better wait and find out first what God wants us to do. Let's find out and let's get some confirmation. Where does he want us to go? Because he, we, we had obeyed God and just moved out and God is stopping us and say, don't go. Don't, don't come here. This is not the place you need to come to. They, they would have said and said, okay, we are waiting on God. Let's go, oh God, give us confirmation. But you know what they did? Instead of waiting on God to pray and ask for confirmation, they, 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 they immediately began to, okay, God stopped them from preaching here. They moved ahead to Mysia. And when they got to Mysia, Holy Spirit stopped them again. So they went ahead to uh, Bithynia. So, you know, from Bithynia, Holy Spirit stopped them again. So they went ahead to Mysia again. They were so intense. They were so busy. They were so no. They were so fast. They they needed to obey the instruction of God speedily. So they went there again, and Holy Spirit stopped them again in Mysia. And then it, they went to Troas, throw, throw and in Troas, Holy Spirit stopped them again. This is not the place I want you to go. So you see, instead of them to wait, because they had gotten the instruction one time, go ye therefore into all the world. So they just kept on going. They just kept on going. They just kept on going until Holy Spirit stopped them and said, okay, now I see that you are ready to go. Now I see that you are focused at doing what I want you to go. Now I see that you are not waiting. Then Holy Spirit now came and gave them the vision about Macedonia. That was when they now saw the vision about Macedonia and said, okay, come to us, Macedonia. And that was the place we are supposed to go to. God will not reveal to you some things unless you begin to move. God will not reveal to you some things unless you begin to, you know, do your best first. God will not reveal some things to you when, while you are waiting. God does not reveal, he will not reveal to you while you are waiting. He will reveal to you while you are moving. He will not no, no, reveal some things to you while you are, you know, waiting for confirmation. He will reveal things, his strategies, his tactics to you while you are busy. 
He will reveal his strategies to you while you are doing your best. He will reveal his strategies to you while you are showing him that you are obedient. He will reveal his strategies to you as you are in the move, as you are going. So while you are going, while you are doing what you need to do, that is when the Spirit of God will begin to speak to you. More revelation will begin to come to you. More understanding will begin to come to you. Even if you are wrong one way, God knows uh, uh, thousands of ways to stop you. Even if you go the wrong way, God knows he, he has thousands of ways to correct you. Even if you are taking the wrong step, he has millions of ways to redirect you back into the right step. But if God knows your heart, if your heart is poor, if, I mean, if your heart is pure, if your heart is clean, and you want to serve him and you want to please him and your intention and focus is on pleasing him and glorifying him and you know you know doing his will he will direct your path he will not direct your path while you are sitting down he will because he direct your path means you are in the move you're already moving then he will direct your path you will be led by the spirit of god while you are already doing something so the doctrine of waiting on god or waiting on god is one of the greatest time killers in the world the, the doctrine of, you know, waiting for confirmation. I personally think that it is de demonic. And I think it is the trick of Satan to deceive us and to, 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 you know, to make us to waste life, waste time, and not to actually have results in our life. So, you know, I personally, I, do I wait on God? Yes, I have solitude. I have a period of solitude that I wait on God, but not on action. I'm waiting on God to receive his presence. I'm waiting on God to receive his next direction. But once I get his next direction, and once I get his direction, I am no more sitting down there and still waiting for confirmation. I don't wait for confirmation. I wait on God, but not for confirmation. I, even if I need to wait for confirmation, it means that I've not gotten strong instruction or concrete instruction. But once you know that what you are supposed to do is what you are supposed to do, you have peace about it, and you know it's right, you have done the research, you have done the calculations, you have done your duty, diligence and you know it's right and your heart is in it and your heart is not stopping you the spirit of god is not stopping you go for it throw away that doctrine of waiting for confirmation throw away that doctrine of waiting for you know for 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 to, you know to to hear what i mean to what go you know to, to for confirmation or whatever they say uh, you know i will pray about it you know throw it away and do what you need to do that is one of the ways you could regain your time and you claim your time that and, and be able to maximize your life and your and, 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 and your time now some people say okay how do i then know that is the will of god there are four ways for you to know if what you want to do is the will of God or not, if it's right or not. Number one, if it's the will of God, it will not be against the word of God. If it's not against the word of God, go for it. Stop waiting on God. Stop waiting to get for confirmation. Stand up and get busy. The Bible didn't say, sit ye therefore and go and wait for the will of God. It said, go ye therefore. The Bible didn't say, sit ye therefore and wait for confirmation. No, it said, go ye therefore. So if, it, if the thing you want to do is not against the written word of God, go for it. Number two, if the thing that you want to do is good for God, is in the interest of God, you know it's in the interest of God, it's in the interest of the kingdom of God, go for it. Throw away that religious baggage of, oh, okay, maybe it's not the will of God. Okay, okay. Make, just throw it away in the garbage. If it's good for God, it's good for anything. If it's the will of God, your heart is for it, your heart is not, is not against it. I mean, you know, you think no is good for God, for, for, go for it. Now, number three, number, number three, if what you want to do is good for people, if what you want to do is good for people, go for it. Like I told you yesterday, I, I met a very great guy, a genius guy from Nigeria. He was an inventor. And God gave him different ideas. And one of the ideas that God gave him is how to provide uh, accommodation and uh, housing for Nigerians. I mean, this guy is a genius. I mean, he has, you know, creative mind. He's, 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 you know, he's an inventor. And he came up with the idea of how to, you know, create accommodation for millions of Nigerians. And when he went to his pastor, his pastor told him, uh, you know, uh, okay, no problem. You come here. Who, you know, you will make you a pastor and uh, so that you get people saved. That is the will of God. You know, to get people saved, get, uh, you know, the church to grow, that is what God wants. That is the will of God. 
invention to get people to where people should live in and all that technology inventing this inventing that it's okay you know you just put it somewhere I pray to god god will know how to do that one but you just come and spend your time here in the church and get people saved you know so that is you know that is deception of the highest order if you just not just when you are getting people saved you are serving god so they wanted this man to serve god and the, the only way they could make him to serve God is to make him a pastor. So from an inventor, they took him from his laboratory, took him away from there, put him in the church and ordained him as a pastor. That is, that is heartless. That is wickedness. That is wickedness. You can serve God with your gift. You can serve God with your talent. You can serve God with your calling. Everybody has his own calling. You don't, it doesn't have to be a church. Only people who have five-fold calling should be in the church. Only people who have five-fold churches, I mean, your calling should be sitting in the church to be getting people saved every day. But you can even get more people saved by, 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 by get, get, giving them housing. You can get more people saved by resolving their technological problem. Can you imagine if he's a Christian that has invented the iPad? Or is a Christian, if it's a Christian that invented the you know Apple App, Apple company, okay, everything he says, he could get the whole world saved. Can you imagine if Bill Gates is a born again Christian? He could get the whole world saved. I mean, you could get God more people saved, more people converted through your gifting, through your calling, than through religious activities. Everything does not have to be religion. Everything does not have to be religious activity. Well, now, why am I saying this? It's because you know. If the thing you want to do is in the word of God, number one, if the thing is not against the word of God, if the thing you want to do is not against God, is in the, is in the interest of God and in the will of God, number three, if the thing that you want to do is in the interest of people, is good for people, if what you want to do is good for people, go do it. You don't need any ordination for that. You don't need anybody to lay hands on you for that. I heard that in Africa now and in many charismatic churches that so people are coming, every little thing they want to do, they are coming to pastor. Pastor, I want to do this thing. Come and bless me. It's just like the other day somebody was in my house and he was asking me, pastor. I said, yes. I said, I, I need to see you. I said, okay. So I came to see him and he came. He said, ah, pastor, God gave me an idea to write a book. I said, okay. So why did you come to me? Why? I will go and write it. He said, no, uh, I just came to you so that you will bless it. I said, thank God I'm born again. I would have slapped you. I would have slapped you. Get out of my face. Ah, no, 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 pastor. Uh, you know, you are anointed, you're blessing. I said, so that, I said, well, I just tried to be nice to him that, that day. Just try to be nice to him and say, okay, let me just, I said, I will not bless you, but let me just give you a couple of advice. How can God tell you to do something already and you are coming to me again to bless you? Uh -uh. What kind of religiosity is that for Christ's sake? Some people want to go and you know, start a business and they're going to pass it to bless them. My God, what is wrong with you people, with Christians? You want to go and invent something and you have to, okay, so if the pastor says you shouldn't do it or it's not the God blessing to go, so you have to stop. Listen, listen to me. Listen to me here. Now, listen to me here. If whatever idea you have is good for God, if whatever idea you have is good for people, if whatever idea you have is not against your heart. Your conscience is not against it. And it's not against the word of God. Go for it. Go for it. You don't need any man to consult you, to wait on God, to you know get confirmation. You don't need any prophet. Take your money back from them prophets. Take your send somebody. You take your money back from those. From, the, from those from those faith offering, uh, prophet offering, you know, tithe offering, first fruit offering. Go get your money back. And get your life back too. You are wasting life. You are wasting time. And you are ridiculing God. The God that is in you. The fullness of all things that is in you. You are ridiculing God. You are making God a joke.
I'm sorry, I lost it a little bit there. I'm sorry. Sorry for that. You need intensity to move fast and quick. You need speed to regain back time. And you need another word that you need to move forward and to regain back your lost years is focus. Focus. Focus and concentration. Focus and concentration. Focus and concentration. Focus and concentration. That's another thing you need. I always like to use the example of this light. Wherever you are, in the room where you are, I'm sure you have light right now. Just like I have light here. There's light coming from the, from, 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 from the, from the bulbs, from the electricity. There is light where you are right now. Now, that light that you are in the room where you are right now, you know that light is not, is not hitting you hot, right? It's not burning you. That light is not a fire. That light that is in your room right now cannot cook your food. That light that is in your room or in my room right now cannot heat your, I mean, cannot, you know, heat your water for your tea. It will not prepare your tea. It's not hot. This light, you know why? Even though it is electricity, even though it is energy, but the energy of this light is, is dispersed, is disseminated, is, is dispersed. It's not that it's, it's more electricity there. No, it is not that it is more energy there. No, it's good energy, strong energy, you know, good power. But because it is dispersed, it is electricity, this same light, because it is dispersed, it's not hot to burn. It's not hot to cook. It's not hot enough to even do tea. But if you use the power of focus, if you will use the power of laser and laser is to bring about focus if you will use laser and use the force of laser and bring together just this amount of energy this same amount of light and put it concentrated if you put it and concentrate it in a force and put it in a laser, I mean, through laser, into one energy, you unite it, put it together with the, through the power of focus. You focus all this dissipated uh, energy, you put them in one force, in one intensity, in one energy. That fire, that energy, I mean, that energy, this power, this light, it will be converted into so much energy that it will cook your food. It will become fire. It could become a fire that could consume and burn the whole house down. It could become so forceful that it will be able to break through an iron laser. The laser force will make it to, the focus of that energy will make it to go through even metal, iron. It will even be able to penetrate through anything. It will be a force. It will be like a fire. It could become like fire. That is the power of focus. If you could, the same amount of time we have, Let's say, you know, um, let's say we have one hour. You have one hour, I have one hour. The, uh, the, the amount of value you are able to produce in that one hour depends to a large extent on the power of your focus. That one hour, you know, I could be, I, like I said the other time, there is somebody who could be producing, let's say, this product, let's say this is a product, it, might, it could be anything, or a cake. Somebody could be so focused that it will produce 10 cake in an hour. Because he's been so focused in learning the skills. He's been so focused in gathering together his ideas. So in one hour, one person will be producing 10 cakes while while in that same hour the other person has not even collected the plate, has not even opened the oven to do the cake. 
one hour is only enough for somebody to just go and gather the the utensils to do the to cake and i know that why he's still gathering the utensils and thinking he's lost in his thought and he say ah okay uh what should we do today uh where's my son now ah okay where's my daughter and his mind and his thoughts are just everywhere that's why he's not able to produce so many cakes he's not even able to produce one cake in uh, in two hours but uh, one person that is so focused the power of focus is making him to produce 10 at the time when you are not producing one focus focus and concentration focus and concentration will return back to you your lost years focus and concentration focus and concentration will restore to you your lost years by the way, if you have not shared the link for this program yet, if you have not shared, your, if you have not pressed your link button, I mean your share button, if you have not shared the link for, to this program, go and do it now. Make sure that you look for your share button now. Go pay, press the share button now. Why? Because you don't want to, you want this copy of this message to be on your timeline. If you want it to be on your timeline, go copy it right now. Copy it to your place so that you can watch it over and over again. Because I'm going to make it more, a lot of points. And you need to watch this thing again and again. So for you not to lose it, go and press the share button. Share it right now. Go and press the share button as we continue. Okay? And of course, I'm going to continue this tonight. I'm going to continue this message tonight. And that is 7, 7 o'clock, uh, 7 p.m. British time and 7 p.m. Nigerian time and 2 p.m. Uh, Eastern time in America. So about every morning I'm here as usual, 7.30 a.m. Uh, British time, 7.30 a.m. Nigerian time and 2.30 a.m. Uh, American Eastern time. Now, the next thing you need to know to be able to regain and reclaim back your years like I said, you cannot buy time. I mean, you cannot buy time with money. You cannot store up time. But what you can do with time is that you can package into time, into a very, uh, into a second or a minute or an hour. You can package as much as possible into the, any available time you have. So the, what I'm teaching you is the key to package maximum value. You could arrange and organize yourself in such a way that you cost you every minute or every hour of your day to be packed with so much value. You could create so much value in an hour of your day. And that is the idea. That is how you could reclaim or regain back your life. Another way you could reclaim and regain back your lost years is through self-education. But self-education must be ap ap applied in speed, in intensity, with intensity, and with focus. Listen to that. If you want to regain back your years, it is not just self-education that will help you regain back your years, your lost years. But you must apply self-education with intensity, with speed, and with focus. And then, listen closely. Any, if you want to regain back your lost year, any activity that you do that is targeting the production of value or that is targeting the production of, uh, of, uh, of product or service, anything you want to produce, you must make sure that you combine many values, many qualities into the into the into the into the process of production. Your every process of production must be full of it must be done. Everything you are producing. If you are producing this thing, or you are producing this thing, anything you are doing, or you are preaching, you, everything you are doing, you must make sure to regain your life and to reclaim back your lost years, you must make sure that any activity that is targeted at attaining your goal must be done with the same qualities of intensity, speed, and focus. You must combine them together. You must, if you are to, if, for example, if I began to do a program here on television, on live broadcast and i say i want to do live broadcast i'm not doing like every other person that is just do live broadcast once a week live broadcast once every sunday live broadcast <laughs> once a month live broadcast only when we have something happening live broadcast only when an event happens or when something happens but i know the law of reclaiming time and regaining time i know if i'm going to you know do this 
I'm, I've, I'm 50 years old now soon and I've not been known to the world because I've been busy in Russia. I've been behind the Iron Curtain. I must not just do live broadcast. The key is not just doing live broadcast. The key is the ability to maximize time while you are doing live broadcast. The key is the ability to be able to do it with intensity, speed and focus all combined together. So when you are doing self-education, it must also be combined with intensity, speed, and focus. And even in your process of building your factory or working in the lab laboratory or working in the, you know, in the library or anything you want to do in the process of producing your, you know, your, 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 your product or your service or in producing or, you know, your, your life goal or fulfilling your goal, all, always make sure all these things are done in intensity, in speed, and in focus. Okay? The same thing, another way you could, you know, regain back your lost life, another way you could re regain back your lost life and uh, your lost time is by engaging other people, maximizing your life by maximizing the potential in other people. You could find people who are able to do what you are able to do and maximize yourself by maximizing their time. You know, you could help other people organize their time. You could help and teach other people to work in speed, in focus, in, in, in intensity, you could, uh, uh, what do you call it? Delegate your task, delegate your assignment, delegate your, your passion, you could delegate your goals, you could delegate your objective into other people. But not just delegate, but you could delegate whatever you need to do to other people. But while you are delegating, you are also helping them to maximize, to know how to maximize their time. Like, for example, right now, one of the things that I want to do is that I'm looking for writers. I'm looking for writers, professional writers or people who are good in writing. All these teachings that I'm doing here, I, I want to bring together anybody that knows how to write and I want to, you know, teach them what to write and how to write. I want to, you know, show them what to do and I want to be able to turn all these my teachings into books. And the reason for that is because, you know, I cannot do that alone myself anymore. You know, so I have to delegate authority, you know, to people who are able to write. So if you are a writer, you need to write to me. My email is pastor at godembassy, one word, godembassy.org. Pastor at godembassy.org. And that's how we're going to, I'm going to duplicate myself. And that is how I'm going to win back the lost years. So, so one of the ways for you to win back your lost years and to reclaim back your lost years is to find professionals and learn to delegate to them. Another way is to learn to maximize the time of others. Maximize the time and resources of others. Learn to maximize and, 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 and uh, yeah, maximize and, and, you know, the, the time and resources of other people. Learn to maximize and, uh, and the time and resources of other people. Next point. Another way for you to maximize, I mean, to re reclaim back your lost years and your lost, your, your lost time is through the, through the power of conversion. Conversion through hard work. You must learn to use hard work to convert. Everything you hear, you must convert you must ask yourself the question, how is this thing I'm hearing going to help me? How can I use this thing I'm hearing to facilitate my, my calling, my vision? Everything you see, you must ask yourself, how can I use this thing that I'm seeing to add to my value and to add to what I, what I need to do? Everything that you, is happening around you, you must ask yourself the question, how can I use this thing? So the power of conversion... You must convert, and the greatest way to convert is through hard work. So you must use hard work to convert everything that you see, everything you hear. You must always bring all of that into adding value to you, into adding value to your to, your, to yourself and to your to your product and to your to your to your to whatever value, the thing that you are creating and producing. Add value to yourself through hard, I mean, through power of conversion. Use hard work to convert. Use hard work to convert everything you see, everything you hear, everything that's happening around you. Always bring them into how can this 
make me better? How can this, you know, add value to me? How can this help me in my productivity? How can this help me in my, in my, in producing my, my, uh, my goods, my services, everything? My, my God. Another thing, but my time is fast going, I can't believe it. Another way you can regain back your lost life is through the power of solitude. I spoke about that yesterday. Learn to practice solitude. For me, in the, for the last 20 years, in the last uh, no, uh, 18 years, I've been going away every month for a week just to be alone. No family, no children. Lock myself at least for three days, maybe between three days to seven days. I lock myself up and I just catch up with everything. I lock myself up, listen, and, you know, develop myself, add value to myself, get ideas, and I come out. When I begin, once I come out, I begin to run like crazy. So learn to practice solitude. And don't just practice solitude once in a while. Do solitude with intensity. Do solitude with speed. Do solitude with focus. That's what will give you the result. Next point, you must learn the power of no. For you to be able to, you know, regain back your lost life and your lost time, you must learn to say no. You must learn to say no to good things because good is the enemy of the better, of the best. Bet, good is the enemy of the better, of the best. So if you don't learn to say no, you will never get the best thing in your, in, in, in your life, really. You will never get the best thing. So, learn the power to say no to friends. Learn the power to say no to relatives. Learn the power to say no to family members. Learn the power to say no to, you know, pressures that are coming from around you. Learn the power to say no to yourself. Learn the power to say no. Anything that will take you away and that is not working towards facilitating your goal and your mission in life. Anything that is not in the direction of your calling, say no to it. Learn to say no. Learn to say no to anything that is not working towards your goal, towards fulfilling you fulfilling your calling. You know, your, you know, your, you know, do whatever God has called you to do. Say no, and learn to say no to pastors and churches as well. Learn to say no to church programs. Learn to say no to anybody's agenda. Learn to say no to things that are not helping you to be better, even if they are religious stuff. Learn to say no. All right. The last thing I want to mention is make sure all your activities, all your activities are only activities that are leading you automatically into fulfilling your calling. And the only thing you want to engage in, 60% of your time in the day must be used only to fulfill the calling and the gifting that you have. 40% you might have to do family stuff, you know, inspirational stuff, love stuff, and things like that. But 60% of your time must be devoted into only fulfilling. And most of your activities should be all around fulfilling your calling and your purpose.